You're listening to the audio portion of Workshop Wednesdays. Workshop Wednesdays is a free live discussion about topics affecting accountants, bookkeepers, and business owners. You can join the ABO group in Facebook to participate live Wednesdays at 10 a.m. Pacific Time. Just search for ABBO in Facebook. This podcast is brought to you by SchoolofBookkeeping.com, where you will learn, grow, and build a thriving bookkeeping practice. We have hundreds of lessons with almost every aspect of the industry. Start your free month today at SchoolofBookkeeping.com. All right. Take two, and we're live. (laughs) <laughs> with another right. workshop Wednesday with uh, School of Bookkeeping. Uh, now we're also uh, joined again by our, our friend over at Avalara, Travis, because uh, we'll be continuing our series on sales tax fundamentals. And today we'll be unpacking where do you sell? So we talked a little bit about Nexus. We talked a little bit about um, what uh, what, do you, what do you sell and, and who do you sell it to? Now we're going to talk about the, the where of three of the the three main uh, components of, of sales tax itself. Um, sure. But one of the things I wanted to uh, mention, we forgot last time, uh, for those of you that are watching us, uh, please share this on, um, on your, your, uh, your social media channel uh, of choice. And in the comments, put in where you did it and uh, we will a- enter you into a drawing for an exclusive School of Bookkeeping shirt. Uh, so at the end of the at the end of the month, we will uh, we will spin the wheel of fun, <laughs> and and we'll have a we'll have a live on the workshop. Uh, so we'll have a winner. So uh, Susan Humphreys is is definitely in the lead for the amount of times that she has. Uh, um, I'm going to share this here um, for the amount of times that she has shared it, uh, but. Uh, you know, if you want to try to wrestle it away from from Susan Humphreys, um, you can do so by sharing sharing the the YouTube or or the, the the web page wherever you share it to. Just put in the comments where you did, and that will enter you uh, into the drawing of the the wheel of fun. <laughs> we always like to have fun, right? The the exclude yeah. What do we say, uh, Carrie? We put the fu in fun. As we do. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, um, so we are continuing. Um, you, you may notice that my background keeps changing. Um, <laughs> I right. am in, yeah. Where, where in the world is Dan today? I'm actually in Phoenix, Arizona. And uh, for, for some reason, the, the business center that I'm in here, uh, they have the heat on. So it is, <laughs> it is terribly warm. In this in this uh, business center, and I'm by all these this machinery that is uh, emanating heat on top of that. So if I start sweating, uh, you know what? <laughs> I'm not nervous. I'm just really hot in this uh, enclosed room. Mm. So uh, so we're going to uh, continue our uh, our discussion with Travis about the the three main components of of sales tax, and then next week we'll talk. We'll break out some of the. Uh, the water cooler sales tax, weird, wacky, wild things that we've <laughs> that he's maybe come across with uh, with the uniqueness of of sales tax because, gosh, uh, at Avalara, that's you live and breathe uh, sales tax, right, Tra- right, Travis? I do, I do. For 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 the past five years now, I personally have uh, been living and breathing sales tax. So. <laughs> Yeah, uh, one one thing that I, I noticed um, some states, and, and it really just depends on the states. Uh, why do they call it something different? Like uh, like Arizona, since I'm in Arizona, they don't call it sales tax. They call it the transaction privilege tax. What what why? Oh, yeah. <laughs> why do yeah, they call TPT, it different yeah. things? Yeah. Yeah, I mean that's that's a good question. Uh, I think some of these states, uh, I you know. I would probably have to talk to someone from our compliance team to get down to the root of like why they call it, uh, you know, TPT in Arizona versus like franchise tax in Texas versus, you know, some of these other states. Right. And, and um, you know, different names for it. But at the end of the day, the day, that's their transactional tax compliance. That is their you know form of sales tax, which, you know, yeah. Uh, for us, I, I got, actually got that question recently, and you know that's a standard uh, tax return that we do for folks is that TPT 
in Arizona. So, yeah, yeah I mean, it sounds so elitist, right? Like, oh, <laughs> this is <laughs> this yeah. is your privilege. Yeah. It's it's a privilege it's for you privilege. to buy this item and and pay us, uh, <laughs> pay the government sales tax on it, right? Yeah. So, all right, and then and then the government entities that you you know the tax agencies that you have to pay it to, like, what is it? Uh, uh, California is what the state board of equalization. Uh, and then <laughs> yeah. Arizona is the Department of Revenue. It's like it's never consistent uh, between yep. one <laughs> one or the other. Uh, but it all yep. boils down to, like you said, it's, it's going to be their transaction uh, sales tax, uh, unless you're in those uh, nomad states, right? Right. Not right. nomad like moving. That, that's the <laughs> what is it? Uh, it's a, it's the five so it's states new, that don't. Uh, don't yeah. So it's five states that that's the acronym, Dan. So good job. Yes, yeah, the nomad states. So that's the easy way to remember it, right? But it's basically so there's only 46 states that have a state administered sales tax, or you know if they call it something different, you know just that transactional tax, right? Um, but the five states that don't have that would be. Uh, New Hampshire, Oregon, Montana, Alaska, and Delaware. Um, you know, I think that's why there's a lot of, com- you know, startups incorporated in Delaware, because I don't think they have corporate income tax either. So that's a great state for uh, for getting out of paying tax. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that's a, <laughs> that's a good way to think about it. And then I think Alaska's, you know, Alaska's on there. They're kind of weird because they do have like a local, locally administered uh, sales tax. Um, but you know, at the end of the day, yeah, those are the nomad states. Those are the ones that you generally don't have to worry about, uh, even if you have nexus there. So then, um, now let's talk a little bit about like where you sell, right? So we, we talked about nexus, you know, when we first, um, you know, started this, this whole topic, um, you know, because that is, there, there's a component of physical presence, uh, and then there's a component of, uh, economic uh, presence, uh, but this gets a little bit uh, deeper when you're when you're talking about like um, you know where do you, you specifically sell? Uh, you know where is that transaction actually occurring um, when it comes to you know some types of businesses like field service where they have you know inventory selling parts on the truck and the and they're delivering uh, things and then actually that it's it's taking place in at a customer's home. Um, or if you're selling things online and it's delivered, you know, you're shipping to yep. uh, talk a little bit about, uh, some of those complexities when it comes to where transactions are actually taking, uh, taking place and what is the responsibility of a, of a business. Yep. Yep. Great question. So that's, you know, that's something that really, you know, it, it, it comes back to the South Dakota versus Wayfair case and, you know, how that decision on economic nexus has completely changed the game because now, you know, you don't, as a business, it's, you're not determining where you have Nexus anymore. It's not only, you know, where you have physical presence, where you have that fixed place of business, or, you know, if you're selling something tangible where you're warehousing product or have property, um, you know, where you have employees or payroll, right? Now your customers determine it. So you have to be aware of, you know, it's based on how much product you're shipping into a state um, or, uh, you know, if it's, if you're service-based, if you're selling software, you know, um, services you're providing into a state. So to your point, you know, any, anything delivered into that state is, is, you know, counting towards that state's economic nexus threshold. And then let's say you already have nexus. Yeah. I mean, you're, you're going to be collecting based on wherever that, you know, if it's going to another state, meaning interstate commerce, you're always going to be collecting based on, you know, wherever that destination is, uh, where that product or service is being delivered, you know, is, is the, the rate you're going to calculate. And, you know, that's where you're going to collect and remit if you have okay. access. Right? So, Unless you're in California, right? I mean, is that the only state that has source and destination or are there other states that have that um, as well, right? Like when you're doing it within the state. Yeah, yeah. I think California may be the only state that has that funny rule where it's like, hey, they are an origin based state, but you're still collecting based on the district <laughs> that you're shipping to. Yeah, it's it's crazy. California's um not oh, necessarily on the list of what we call the nightmare states, but but they're they're up there. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Do you have an yeah. acronym for the nightmares? Is it uh, like, no, uh no there's no ac- <laughs> acronym, but I'll just tell you, you know, a couple few of the couple of the states, Colorado, in the right? <laughs> Colorado, you got it right. And um, 
in Louisiana, not to get off topic, but that's just, you know, not only are you collecting based on the specific jurisdiction, but you also have to file uh, separate returns for in Colorado, they call them home rule cities, right? So you're filing the state level return for everything you collected at the state rate. And then everything you collected in Denver, Steamboat Spring, like what have you, right? You're, you're filing a separate return and for Louisiana, it's the state return and then the parish level, right? So those are, those are what makes those the nightmare states, but there's still, you know, those states like California and New York, like, you know, obviously it, it's, it's not fun uh, generally yeah. dealing with those guys. Well, I mean, and, and I always go back to uh, the friend that I used, uh, uh, the friend that I had that worked at uh, the Arizona department of revenue. Um, you know, she, she gave me an example of, you know, in just, just in Arizona, there are uh, five, you know, over 500, jurisdictions uh just for that one state um and when it comes down to the topic that we're talking about where do you sell um you know it's up to the it's up to the business owner to know all right if i uh if i sell it out of my business it's one jurisdiction but if i take it on a truck and deliver it to them to my customer it's another it could potentially be another jurisdiction right travis that's that's correct. Yeah. So like, you know, if we're if you're if you're in a destination based state, it's you know, it's going to be it, it's always going to be based on where, you know, where that's where it's being delivered, even if it's inside the same state. Right. You're you're, you're needing to collect based on wherever you're delivering that product, wherever that, you know, your customers located um, or if you're service based, wherever that job is. Right. And then, you know, like whenever we're talking interstate commerce, it's always going to be where, where, where that product or service is being delivered. But, you know, we do have some of these States, which are, you know, origin based where it makes it a little easier. You're just collecting based on where you're located. Right. So. Um, um, what States are, are, are origin based that, uh, you know, off the top of your head, you don't have to rat, rattle them all off, but you know, just some of the. the uh, off the top of my head, I believe. So Texas uh, would be an, an origin based state. Um, uh, gosh, that, that's a tough one. Yeah. I would have to, uh, I would have to get the list. That, that's why you have things like Avalara to know all those things. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, based it, off it, those, at uh, this point in my career, I've probably, uh, forgotten more than what I actually know. So, um, <laughs> right. so, um, and, and that brings up like an interesting point. Like I, I remember, um, you know, seeing some other, uh, demonstrations of, from, from Avalara with, with the Colorado, you know, the, that it was actually next door neighbors, uh, were in two different tax jurisdictions. Um, you know, it's good. So it can't be something as simple as like the, the zip code or, you know, something like that. It's, right. it, it can potentially be, uh, you know, one, one, one person is one tax jurisdiction and the next door neighbor was another. Um, yeah. And, and that, those are the, the nightmare type of situations. Yeah. So that, yeah, great, great point, Dan. So that kind of circles right back around to Colorado and like why we yeah. have so many customers that, uh, you know, maybe they're, maybe they only have Nexus in Colorado, but they still need our help. Right. Because, um, you know, that's a great example. You can be in the Denver area and you walk across the street and it's you're you're in a different taxing jurisdiction and it's a different rate. So, you know, there can be four or five different uh, boundaries or rates, you know, in that same zip, which, you know, I always tell people, hey, like zip codes, those are for delivering the mail. <laughs> they don't, you know, for a lot of folks, that's the best way to for them to calculate sales tax. And, you know, generally it'll get you close. But, uh, you know, there can definitely be some complexities there. Yeah, yeah. Now, Gary, I've been uh, monopolizing the the conversation. Anything that uh, you? <laughs> I'm just glad I'm in a state that's not that complicated. They call it Department of Revenue. <laughs> they call it sales tax. Um, but yeah, well, I mean, one of the things that we rolled into just this week was, you know, setting up our sales tax. You have to be real careful if you're brand new and small to, you know. Don't don't just sign up. You got to watch what buttons you pick because they're suddenly saying you need to file all these returns. And we're just we don't even have sales to do. So that was kind of a sales tax headache that we received. This week. <laughs> yeah, so we'll have to have to take care of that. So <laughs> um, was I going to uh, there was a question that I was, I was going to ask. 
uh, Travis and I, and it just, it just, uh, it went away and I, hopefully it'll, hopefully it'll come back. But, um, any other uh, thoughts that you have, Travis, about, you know, where, where items are, are sold that, that people need to, uh, really be aware of. Um, so you know, takeaway here is that if you're in California, uh, Colorado, don't yeah. try to do sales tax yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So there, yeah, yeah. That's, that's a great point. Um, yeah. There's not a lot of people that want to try to tackle it manually there. Um, but you know, I would say fundamentally, like, you know, the first thing you need to look at is, is Nexus. Like, okay. am if, if I'm a growing company, right. Which a lot of, you know, a lot of these uh, businesses that are on QuickBooks are, you know, that I work with are fast growing. Right. And they're trending toward, towards hitting economic nexus thresholds. And that's all about, you know, Hey, how much products uh, are we shipping in, in the state or how much, you know, what do we sell in services? Are we getting close to these thresholds? Are we passing thresholds? So that's the first question is like, Hey, you know, have we hit nexus yet in this state based on what we're shipping or services we're delivering in the state? And then if so, Hey, well now we're at a point where we need to get registered and start collecting because we do have a, a sales tax obligation there now. Um, but that that brings then, up an yeah. interesting question. So once you cross or th- pass the, that economic ne- nexus threshold, mm-hmm. how soon do you have to, like, do you have to go back once you pass uh, it? And then and like, when do you, is there a grace period that the, that the States will have? Yeah. Good, good question. And, and the answer is to that is with, with most things, uh, sales and local taxes, it depends on the state, right? So like <laughs> most states do give you sort of a grace period, right? So some states say explicitly like, Hey, you know, you're able to register 30 days after, you know, passing the threshold or 60 days. So, you know, a lot of times I do have people that are worried like, Hey, do we need to go back? Do we need to do back filing? Well, you know, not if you're on top of it. So if you if you register rel- relatively soon after passing the threshold, you know, you should be in the clear, right? You don't have to worry about a whole lot um, as far as like any uncollected sales tax or having to go back and back, back file or, you know, worst case voluntary disclosure agreements. Um, so, you know, but yeah, depending on the state, it could be 30 to 60 days. So that's why you just want to be on top of it, you know, Um you know, so you can go ahead and at least get that process uh, registration process started shortly after passing the threshold. Um, you know, if you're working with Avalara, right, we have that integration with QuickBooks, different e-commerce platforms, what have you. So, you know, our system's picking up on all those transactions and we're able to alert customers via heat map. Hey, you're getting close. You're at 80 percent of the threshold. Hey, you know, the state just turned to bright orange. You, you actually passed the threshold and it's it's your your cue to register, which you know, then that process is, you know, not fun, depending on the state, again, like with most things, you know, tax compliance related. So you're, you know, filling out forms and paperwork to get registered with the state. That's another thing that, you know, Avalara can take off your plate and we can expedite that process for you. Um, yeah. And then from there, it's like, hey, let's make sure we're collecting accurately based on the, the specific jurisdiction that our customers in. Yes, there are some states that are simpler than others that have one tax rate. Like, you know, I think off the top of my head, what it's like, um, uh, I think New Jersey, Mass, or a couple of those states where it's just, you know, one tax rate, one jurisdiction. But most are going to have hundreds, if not a thousand plus boundaries or taxing right. jurisdictions, you know, that you're going to have to collect based on where, you know, where that ship ship to or that yeah. destination or user is located. Right. So. Where, back- where is that heat map? Um, I'm looking for it actually on our um, on our Avitax. So I'm. <laughs> so it should be on right there on your dashboard. Um, let me um, let me share my screen. You can maybe tell okay. me. Let's see here. And I so actually have a screen shot. He's... Sometimes, like you know, it doesn't pull up for some. I mean, it's a standard feature, so you know, it's not like, hey, you have to have the premium version of Avitex to have it. Yeah. So yeah. it looks like, so it should right I, be right there where it says economic thresholds and I can. Yeah. Um, but I did click on that. It takes me to another tab that, uh, you know, shows me about the thresholds, but doesn't necessarily talk about my thresholds. I, yeah. I probably need to. Finish, and then that may, finish the that may be then just because you're already registered everywhere where you, you know, you have something that would register towards the Nexus threshold. Um, 
So, and if not, well, we're, only, we're only registered in three states, so it shouldn't be, yeah, uh, it shouldn't, uh, you know, that, that's what I uh, liked about the, um, the heat map is that um, it will keep us on top of those things as we get close to, uh, so basically what, what uh, Travis is describing is there's a, a map of the United States. And then as we get, um, you know, get close to uh, meeting the economic threshold, so we don't have to, you know, keep on top of these things. It'll it'll just basically give us a dashboard of like, okay, we're close to uh, close to it. Uh, we need to start, you know, registering, and you'll get emails. You know, Avatax will will email you when you're getting close to that threshold, so that you're okay. We need to start getting our ducks in a row. <laughs> yeah. For sure. And I, I went ahead and shared my demo account, Dan. Can can you okay. can everyone see this now? Yep. yep. Okay, great. Yeah, yeah. So we need to update it so we have some an example where you're close, but there'll actually be a yellow color once you're eighty percent. So let's say you're you know eighty K into the hundred K in sales, or you're at, you know, whatever it is, hundred and sixty out of two hundred transactions. I don't know if my percentage is right on that one, but uh, it would turn a yellow color uh, once you're at eighty percent of whatever that threshold is, and then a bright orange. Um, and then it even has in here, like, Hey, here's the next steps. Check with a tax professional. It's like, Hey, just make sure you, you at, in fact did trigger the threshold. You know, you don't have a bunch of exempt sales or something that the right. state doesn't just include in your uh, setup. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. And then step number two, get registered, which again, we can help with and then add new places, which is really just turning on tax calculations. So, you know, if you're just using QuickBooks with no Avatax plugin, you're manually, you know, updating those rates and boundaries it's and tax painful. codes. I've done it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had, a, yeah. I had a customer that was selling uh, seeds and they were in South Carolina and they would occasionally cross the border. They were in, near North Carolina. And so mm -hmm. we had to set up, um, and this is, you know, years and years ago, and it was just one state and I helped her set up the every single zip code and every single county and every single city and it was painful and then every time there was an update and a notice we had to go into that table and update that somebody now has one more percent and i mean it was it's a lot of work a lot of work yep. and that was just for and one the, state one state and, and the thing is there's no value you know to the to the business owner to to collect and remit that right i mean it's it's just a you know overhead it, it's a it's a requirement of doing business uh but yep. there you know it's no there's no value you know they don't they don't make any money off of that they don't make yeah. any it, it's you, just you, time away from their business you, you <laughs> well, don't you don't get a prize you don't get a prize for doing it correct nobody gives you anything you know you don't get a a trophy only or penalties back, when you, you don't well wait yeah. no, you get yeah. the early sometimes you get the early sales tax oh, yeah. discount it's a teeny weeny amount but early you know, filing discount the there you go there's the silver lining carry but yeah you definitely get penalties well they had to pay they had to pay me file. way more than that sales tax discount to set it up and then maintain it i mean between me and the admin person there's you know a lot of yeah. money into that one table for one state so yeah it uh, and they're still doing it, but I'm not helping them. <laughs> so, good luck with that. <laughs> you tapped out. <laughs> yeah, I was like, done. So they uh, they all grew me, but yeah, so you, they're still mainly doing it. It's crazy. But Tra Travis, do you have any resources for for people who might be seeing this? Like, uh, okay, like what? Let's just make sure that um, you know that I'm in. You know, so you've got that um, nexus you know, type of thing. Yep. Uh, but do you have uh, something that might be about like, you know, made tax compliance in the state that I'm in? Um, yeah. So I have a great uh, Nexus guide that, so that's in our resource center um, that I just dropped in there to you. Yep. Uh, a lot of other greats that I just dropped in the chat there. Um yep. And there, we have a lot of other great resources in there um, as far as like specific laws by state and things like that. Um, you know, you, you may want to reach out to Avalara. I mean, we, we do offer a tax research and consulting service where, you know, we have all of that, you know, basically a, a tax research tool where we have all those answers. You know, think about like a, 
almost like a, a Wikipedia meets uh, tax compliance and tax laws and, you know, both letter ruling and like easy to understand, you know, so where, where we have our, our tax engine that will, you know, you can bolt on to QuickBooks or your e-commerce, things like that to, you know, calculate accurately in real time. If it's more just like, hey, uh, we have questions, you know, on you know, different rules or different, you know, taxability of our products and services from state to state, you know, things like that, you know, that's a great way. But yeah, I mean, there's, if somebody clicks on that link for Nexus, it gets into, you know, laws by state on economic Nexus or physical presence. Um, and then we have a lot of other great resources, you know, probably blogs and things like that. If, you know, maybe you're curious how, how services are taxed from state to state, you know, we have you know, a lot of great resources on things like that too. All right. So, uh, so we'll put a bow on uh, the where do you sell conversation here. Uh, so next week, uh, Travis, uh, assuming you're not in uh, Mexico this time, uh, we'll have <laughs> you back and we'll, and we'll talk about some of the more interesting situations like, um, you know, where does Hershey with almonds fit into? Is it a food? Is it a candy uh, type of situation? So we'll talk about some of the unique uh, scenarios uh, when it comes to, to sales tax. So we should hopefully have a little bit more fun with, uh, <laughs> with sales tax uh, next Bring week. So. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so thanks for joining us and we hope you all have a, have a great week and I'll get out of this uh, warm. Uh, <laughs> warm yeah, go, go get you some fresh air, Dan, please. <laughs> all right. Looking kind of <laughs> sweaty there. <laughs> all right. Have a great day. Have a great right. week, everyone. Thanks, Travis. Take care, guys. Thanks.